If you're in year 11, 10 or below and are either thinking of or going to be applying to medicine or dentistry in the UK, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do so that when you come to the time of actually submitting an application, you are gonna be incredibly strong to beat that competition. So what I'm gonna do is tell you first how the application works and the timeline and what you need to do at each stage to maximize your application strength and really give yourself the best chances. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk specifically about what you should do prior to starting year 12, which is when the bulk of the application starts that you can be doing during those years, nine, 10, 11, to really build a strong application and lay the foundations and the specific actions you should be taking at that time. Also, before we start, I do have a free course specifically for year 10 and 11s who are applying to medicine if you want to join that it's completely for free you can join by clicking on the link below and signing up there as you may well already know getting into medicine as an undergraduate applicant is about 16% likelihood of success and for dentistry it's about 15% likelihood now you may have seen articles recently that the number of people applying out of year 12 has gone down however don't be fooled because that was a high that was during the pandemic period, which has kind of normalized, but is still above the pre-pandemic levels. Now, during the pandemic, not only did the number of applicants go up, but the number of places went up as well. So they went from 7,600 to 10,500 places available. Now they have gone back down to the 7,600 as the application numbers have dropped as well. So don't be fooled, it is still incredibly competitive to get in. Now what I'm going to do is firstly explain the rough time frame of the application so you can understand when to start, how to plan and what to do at each stage. Then I'm going to explain the main landmarks during that time period and then I'm going to break it down into our four phase approach and tell you what you should be doing at each stage of that timeline so that you can be really well prepared, focus on one thing at a time and do it really well and that will contribute to you submitting your best application and maximizing your chance of success. So let's first by looking at timings and let's imagine high hypothetically and fast forward into the future that you are starting medical or dental school in September of 2029. That would mean that you would submit your application to that medical or dental school in September 2028 and you should really start preparing in September 2027. So it's a really a two year journey that you'd be spending in the active phase of applying to medical or dental school. Now during that time period, the main events that occur working backwards are firstly, that you will finally get your offers and know for sure whether you got in or didn't get into medical or dental school in May 2029. Then before that, you will have your interview period. And before that, you'll have your September 2028, which is where you will submit your UCAS application. So that September to October time. And then everything before that is all the preparation. So I'm going to talk about all the key stages, but it's going to be writing the new equivalent of the personal statement, choosing your universities, building your CV and doing all of your exams. So I'm going to break all of that down into that four phases that I'm going to tell you about, which is going to help you segment those things really nicely. Now, phase one is all about CV building. And that's the thing that you should be starting as you begin year 12. Now this, as the name suggests, is where you build that CV. So you gain the experience, you gain the skills, and you just demonstrate that you are building yourself into the kind of person that will make a great doctor or dentist. And that when those things have accumulated over that year and you arrive in front of the university and present yourself to them, you just make a really great case for somebody who will go on to be a really good doctor or dentist. So what do those things include? Well, there will be things like gaining experience. So going on work placements, shadowing, just seeing what it's like to be in a hospital or a dental practice and just know exactly what you're letting yourself in for. It's also maybe doing some research or attending talks or just finding out more about the profession and really building your knowledge because that is the stuff that over time massively compounds and you get exponential growth in that area so that when you get a year or even two down the line when you get into interviews, your level is so high that you just stand out from everybody else. It's also engaging in things like extracurricular activities where you are demonstrating your dedication and commitment to something. You might work in a team or you might be the captain of that team. You might develop some traits or just really have some outstanding achievements from doing that particular hobby or whether it's a team sport or whatever it is. It just shows that you have traits parallel to those of a great doctor or dentist. Now, there is a lot to work experience and actually work experience itself has three different types and I make playlists on it for exactly how to maximize each of those. So the medicine one that I did here is just a full playlist of all of the elements of work experience. And I also did a very similar one for dentistry that you can also check out in this playlist where it does exactly the same, but just tailored to dentistry rather than medicine. 
Now, this is why the four phase approach works so well is because you can start doing these things as you're starting year 12 and you can almost some of them set and kind of have them on autopilot to be accumulating while you are then moving on to the next things. Because as you know, in January, you'll probably have some mock exams, if not some real exams that matter and contribute towards your A-levels, but also you'll have other things going on that you need to focus on. This is why we focus on this early. We either get the important things organized or we have them occurring regularly and are just on maintenance so they're low effort and low thought so that we can be accumulating the knowledge and experience as we're going through these phases. So as we come back to school in January and we've finished our exams, that's around the time that we want to be thinking about phase two, which is broadly called exam prep. Now here's probably a good time to introduce what we at FutureDoc have as our six pillars that we get our students to do to make sure that their application is really strong. Now the first pillar is all about strategy. It's about being smart about how you prepare and really sitting down and thinking what the best way to go about the application is for you and your individual circumstances to be clever about how you're going to approach it. So that includes looking at all of the things like building a really incredible CV with the right mix of work experience, volunteering, shadowing, uh, paid work, all of the things that make a really good candidate. Then looking about how we prepare for the exams. At the moment, if you are going as an undergrad, it's just the UCAT because they have got rid of the BCAT, the BMAT, but they are also introducing the CASPER and that is becoming more and more prevalent. So here you may want to check out the rest of the channel where we have got amazing videos for doing really well in both of those exams. And as they change and uh, techniques update and there are better ways to do things, we continually post videos and keep you up to date with all of the stuff that matters for that. So if you don't want to miss out on that, I recommend that you subscribe and turn on notifications because we do bring out videos every week that are going to keep you up to date with the application. This is the best place to keep your finger on the pulse when it comes to medical or dental school applications in the UK. So back to the phases. Phase two, as we said, is exam prep. So this is where you will have both of your A-levels coming up. If you're an international student, we have specific international videos for you in this playlist here. But otherwise, you'll be focusing on really think gearing up towards your A-levels come end of spring, start of summer. But also, you'll be thinking about the UCAT. Now, the UCAT is a really important part of the application. It's a two-hour computer-based exam that is unlike any other exam you'll have done. It's more of a test of skills that they ask you to perform on demand. And it's in five areas. One is the quantitative reasoning, which is your numeracy skills. So maths, basically. There's verbal reasoning, which are literacy skills and your ability to read fast and pick out important bits of information from a passage. There's decision making, which is testing your logic. There's abstract reasoning, which is more of an IQ test style. And they'll be looking at your ability to understand weird shapes and what the patterns are. And then finally, there's the situational judgment, the SJT, which is more the ethical and as the name suggests, in situational style, where you have to pick what you would do in a given circumstance and the best course of action in that scenario. So as I was saying, the six pillars are good strategy, good work experience, nailing the exams. The other parts that I'm gonna come on to talk about are the personal statement, choosing the right medical or dental schools for you as an individual. That is so important to understand your key strengths, your experience, the universities that suit you, or if you have a specific university in mind, how to tailor your application to suit those universities. So that's the first five. And then the final one is interviews, which is not to be underestimated. All of this CV building stuff that we talked about in phase one, and that it's accumulating over time, that is Preparing for interviews now, that is so important because so many people get to interview but don't get past it because they've ignored the previous phases. They've just kind of hacked their way to it and then they get found out at interview. So this is why the method that we teach at FutureDoc has a 93% success rate rather than that 15 or 16% is because we focus on all the important areas and we focus on them early so that people build up and become really, really strong over time. So this is why it helps to segment all the preparation because if you can get everything else sorted so that you can focus solely on doing well in the UCAT, this is where it will really pay off. Now, how to prepare for UCAT is in three phases. And actually, I won't go into it in this video because I do a whole video here on the best revision plan for UCAT. But once you're starting to get to February, March sort of time, this is the time that you want to start at least 
glancing over the material, getting familiar with it and starting to slowly ramp up your prep so that when it comes to UCAT time, which is a kind of start of July where the window opens and that's all the way to the end of September, that's the time that you can sit your exam. You can only sit it once for the cycle. So you have to kind of ramp up at the right time and prepare and find the best time for you during that time that is the best for you to sit it. And tailor your preparation to peak at the right time accordingly. So of course, around this time when you get to May and June is when you're going to have your year 12 exams to think about. So that's why it's important to start a little bit of prep and get some kind of knowledge and understanding in the bank before the intensity of the year 12 exams start so that when you come to actually sitting the real exam, you just have some preparation ready and you know what you need to do to ramp up and build up the intensity to peak when you sit your exam. So then once we get to about due time, this is where things really start to heat up in phase three, which is what I call crunch time. Now, this is where you're going to put all of the preparation that you've been doing beforehand into practice. So over the summer, it's gonna be quite a hectic one. You may not be able to enjoy as long a summer holiday as you have had in previous years, because this is where it's really gonna all kick in. So the things that you're gonna be doing during that summer are sitting that UCAT exam that you've been preparing for. You're going to be writing your personal statement. This is where you're going to get all of the experience that you've been doing and preparing during that time period. You also might be finishing off some of the work experience that you were planning. So that's most likely going to be shadowing, which is either in hospital or dental practice, it's being a fly on the wall, watching a doctor or dentist as they do their thing. But you could have done it in the Easter before, which maybe would have been a little bit less stressful because there is a lot going on during this summer, which is crunch time. So after the work experience, you also need to now put that all together into a personal statement. Now, the personal statement is going to change next year, which means that instead of doing a 4,000 character long piece of text that you just talk about your experience and why you want to study and also what you've done that makes you a good uh, candidate or a good person to go on and be a doctor or a dentist, they have now broken it down into three questions. And I talk about it specifically in this video. However, it doesn't really change from the old personal statement style other than they've broken down what you should be talking about into three divided sections. So not much to worry about in terms of changes. It's still exactly the same principles and the things that you need to demonstrate. So not too much to worry about there. Now, the fourth thing is university selection, a really underestimated part of the application, one that we spend a long time with our students, making sure that they're choosing the right universities for them based on their strengths, their weaknesses, things that they've done, how they've done in their UCAT or other exams, and just really making sure that they're choosing ones that give them the best chance of getting in. And that's one of our secrets that how we help our students do well is choosing really intelligent universities. Or if our students, or if you have your heart set on a really a particular university, a really ambitious one, or just one in particular, it's making sure that you tailor your application to suit the preferences of that university, making sure that we appeal to them. Once all that's done is when you put this all together in an application. Now, at this stage, you may not be familiar with UCAS, but they are the University and Colleges Admissions Service, and they are the portal to which you submit your application. Now, that is everything that you do with your application is done through that. So it's where you put your personal statement, it's where you put your choices, all your grades from your GCSEs, everything goes on there. And that's when you find out how and whether you've got to an interview and where you go for all of that and all the information goes through there, as well as whether you get an offer. So everything goes through UCAS and they will email you when there are updates to your personal email. And that is how everything is done through that portal. Now, the window during which you can submit your application to UCAS is actually a lot smaller for dentistry and medicine than it is compared to all the other courses. So usually UCAS will open the first week of September and for medicine and dentistry and actually for Oxford and Cambridge applications, as it so happens at the same time, it will usually close around the 15th of October, give or take a couple of days each year, but that's roughly when it closes. So a much shorter window within which to submit your application for medicine and dentistry. Now, once that application is submitted, you can breathe a short sigh of relief because that is where the really intense part is done. But now it's time to prepare for interviews. And as I said, do not fall into the trap of thinking that majority of the application lies within that first bit. Interviews is so important because not only is it the final hurdle, it's the one that is still incredibly competitive. And for a lot of universities, you still have a one in four chance. So they only take one in four people that they interview at that stage. For, for other universities like Cambridge, it's even worse, but it's really important not to underestimate that. And like I say, 
preparation that you do from that point and all of the work that you have put in prior to that point are massive contributing factors to how well you will perform an interview and your chances of success. So it can be a bit of a waiting game and you may have some exams to prepare for during that time, but this is why little and often is important at this stage. Interviews can come as early as November, but they can be as late as the end of April. So you really don't know when you're going to be called up to interview. You'll sometimes only get a couple of weeks notice. So it's really important to be prepared and it's something that you just get better at the more you do. But please trust me when I say don't underestimate interviews. It is not just something that you can do as a formality and just quickly prepare for. It is the culmination of that 18 months of practice prior and is so important and is really heart-wrenching when people fall at that final stage. A lot of people that come to me who have not got in before and they want my help to get them in at their second, third, fourth attempt, whatever it is, I often see that people have done exactly this. They have kind of thought that it's all about the preparatory stuff and they haven't really thought about interviews and they've got four interview offers. So they've been invited to interview four times in that cycle and then they haven't got a single offer to go to university. By the way, that reminds me that one thing that I forgot to say about UCAS is that you're only allowed to submit a maximum of four applications to medical or dental school. But anyway, as I was saying, you don't wanna be the person who gets invited to four interviews and doesn't get a single one. Do the work, prepare hard, and you will get what you deserve. So now that you understand the process, if you're in year nine, 10 or 11, and you're thinking, well, what should I do now? Here's really where you should focus. The first thing is that I've made a free course for year 9, 10s and 11s who are considering medicine or dentistry and want to know what they need to do or what they need to prepare for to maximize their chances. I have done that course and it's completely for free. You can check it out by clicking the link in the description below. And like I say, you, that's my gift to you to enjoy. There are no catches. It's just a completely free course from me to you to find out what you can do and how to maximize your chances. The second thing I would say is do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because we are bringing out more videos about how to find out if medicine or if dentistry is the right course for you and what you should do to know whether you are suited to it and if it is something that you should consider as a career. And really alongside the attending talks and reading and researching, the best thing that you can do now is build up that work experience or extracurriculars and those traits that we want to see. So really what I'd recommend is that you, if you want to apply to medicine, I'd recommend that you check out this work experience playlist here or if you want to apply to dentistry, I'd recommend that you check out this work experience playlist here. And that will give you an idea of what you need to do and the stuff that you can be focusing on now to really build that CV. So thank you for watching and I'll see you over in those videos.